what is up guys and welcome back to the channel today is the last day i can stand in project cb9's engine bay we're going to go ahead and drop in the h22 in five speed position it's been a long time coming i hope you guys are excited as i am so let's go ahead and get started all right so i've got an overloaded tool bag equipped with all my impacts and impact sockets ready to get a driver's side axle and here's a 93 accord sedan 272,000 miles interior's already been gone through like vultures as you can see runs and drives but no fifth gear which is a five-speed manual and i think this is my lucky day someone has already taken the engine out transmission sitting right there and lo and behold that is the driver's side axle I need. Someone has already done the work for me, so that saves me a good 30 minutes of my time. So thank you, Junkyard Vultures, for saving me some time. So it looks like this is a rebuilt unit from Napa also. Not bad. So I'm gonna definitely grab this axle. Okay, this is a five-speed axle. You'll need this for your cord if you're doing a five-speed manual because the automatic version differs. Anyhow, they didn't know this is a rebuilt unit with the Napa stickers on there. There is a slight tear in this boot right here. As you can see, you can try and patch it and do whatever you want, but this thing will still separate and just splatter grease all over the place. So I went ahead and got a replacement boot kit right here for the inner. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off, separate the axle, put the new boot in place, load it with some new grease, and then put the new metal band clamps on. And hopefully this thing will go on smooth. So let's see what happens. And we've got success replacing this inner boot. It was basically a snap ring that was holding in place the joint. Once that was able to come right off, then we can slide the new boot right in position, attach the rings. Before you put this last ring on here, you wanna go ahead and load this thing up with grease. And then you can put the final ring in position, but this thing's pretty tight and no more holes. This thing is in position well, bands went on pretty tight. So I'm pretty happy with the end result. Not bad for a free CB joint, being that this is the five-speed driver side unit that we need for this five-speed manual transmission conversion. So now we've got no more missing parts for this engine drop-in. So fingers crossed, everything goes well. All right, on the passenger side of the firewall, we've got the fuel filter right here, and that is held in position with a 17 millimeter and then a 14 millimeter. And once these hoses are loose, we can go ahead and take that 12 millimeter which will then release that collar and that fuel filter will slip right out. We'll go ahead and replace it with a new one and we'll go ahead and get it replaced. Let's get started. Okay, change of direction on some of the motor mounts. This is the innovative 75A that came in the Accord automatic to five speed conversion. As you can see, it's much wider and much taller than that of the Prelude mount system, which is actually shorter and more narrow. This is the Hasport rear 62A, and this is the Hasport driver side 70. I went with the 70 to hold the motor in position a little bit more, and I didn't want crazy interior vibrations. So I want the 62A for the rear. And as you can see how thick the flange is on the mount system on the Hasport compared to the Innovative. And you'll definitely want to get some longer bolts to mount these Hasport mounts in the position on the rear cross member due to the fact that these flanges are a lot more thick. And as you can see here, here's your factory bolts and here's the bolts I picked up. Now, if we take the factory bolt and try and put the mount, I mean, you're literally left with eighth of an inch, quarter inch. That's just not enough threads to lock in position. So this is what I picked up over at Riley's right here, M10 by 1.25 by 40 millimeter. And here's the driver's side. Let me give a demonstration of how this mounts onto the engine. Okay, on the driver's side here, where all the timing components are, you've got this post mount. This is the factory post, obviously. So this basically just slips right on top. 
Now I also picked up a longer bolt itself right here and that will go right through in that position. And then I just use the factory nut into this position right here. And that's basically how this will lock onto this motor. Okay, now regarding this bolt that you'll need that's longer for a Hasport mount that goes on the timing belt side of things. This is the part number I used while I was digging through my parts bin. So this bolt basically is for Acura RSX and certain model Honda Civics for the rear upper camber arms. So that's basically what goes into the chassis of the vehicle. But you know, these bolts are perfect. They're strong. They've already got the flanged head. And here's the part number for those interested if you wanna just order this from Honda. It worked out perfect. So this is your rear T-bracket right here. This is from a 9701 Honda Prelude. And it basically bolts up to the block and the transmission itself. And this is the bolt that drives through that mount right there. So once that mount is mounted to the rear cross member and this engine is lowered into the engine bay, you gotta line up these holes, obviously. All right, the polyurethane is a little tight right here, but you kind of get the idea. You wanna take this hole, align it with this hole in the mount, and then once those are aligned, you take your bolt and run it right through, and that will then lock your rear side of the motor into position. So let's go ahead and take this mount and mount on the cross member right now. All right, one little piece of advice before mounting a motor into your Accord CB. I've got a brake part spreader tool on the rear T-bracket right here. And that is due to the fact that this motor mount is sitting there real tight. And I don't wanna be fighting this thing once this engine is hovering over the engine bay while I'm trying to do this mount and whatnot. So try to open this up and obviously test fit your rear mount before go ahead and mount this motor into your car. So I'm just trying to open this up just a little bit, just so the mount can just slide in with ease. And now I'm not trying to fight this thing because you only have side access right here once this thing is hovering over your engine bay on the engine crane. All right, guys, so after a few attempts with the brake part spreader tool, this is basically the end result I've got. So the mount goes in a lot easier than it was the night before. I mean, it's still got some little spots right there, but there it's lined up right there. It didn't take much effort. You don't want it super, super loose, but you know, it's just a little bit of snugness, but looks like it'll glide right in there. And once you align this pins up, you just take the bolt, goes right through and make sure that this thing is not cross threaded. So turn this a few times by hand, make sure you catch a few threads and you can drive it in with your electric ratchet. Okay, so the rear Hasport mount is mocked up in position. I only put about three or four turns on this. I was advised to leave this mount on the loose side because what happens is when this engine goes into place, it's gonna go in a little bit crooked and I need a little bit of play on this rear mount. And then once things are lined up, we can go ahead and drive the main bolt right through. And then once that's through, then we can finally tighten this up. So for this rear mount, there's gonna be access right here, reaching down with the uh, ratchet and extensions and swivels and whatnot when the motor goes in. And for the orientation of the driver's side mount, once that engine goes in, it basically just falls right into that channel. It'll drive that bolt right through. And that's basically how this motor is locked in position. So three most important mounts is the driver's side, the rear mount, and the transmission mount that's gonna go right through there. Okay, major milestone today. We got the H22 and five-speed. Gonna be dropping the CB9. This has been a long time coming and I can't wait. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this car up on jack stands, remove the wheels and tires, pull out the axles, and get this thing ready to go. So let's get this thing prepared. What's going on guys? I'm Joel, I'm Kevin's friend. Uh, today we're gonna move the engine on into the car and uh, we're all ready to go, so let's go ahead and get started. Another year cut off my youth Yeah, I was born to ride with fate to go Every 
okay, we almost got this H22 five-speed drops in position. Had some complications at first. Ended up taking off the AC compressor that had some clearance issues up front right here, rubbing. So went ahead and removed it. And as you can see here on the rear mount with that rear T-bracket, it's lined up just where it needs to be. And then right now, Joel's putting the nuts on for the transmission mount. So once we get that thing lined up with the transmission mount, we'll go ahead and line up the rear mount right here, finger tight. And then we'll go ahead and drop down the driver's side post. And once these three mounts are in position, we should be golden. So fingers crossed, this is successful. So let's keep going. Now here's the torque specifications that I pulled from the Helms manual. So essentially this outlines what torque specifications is used for the mounts and the main bolt that goes into the chassis. So now over here on the transmission mount, you've got 40 foot pounds on the main bolt right here. And on the bolts that hold it into the transmission, those are 28 foot pounds for this bolt right here, this bolt right here, and that bolt right there, which is a little tough to get to. All right, the rear mount is a little tough to see, but there's one bolt on the front, two on the back, and those are rated at 40 foot-pounds. Okay, now the main bolt that goes through the T-bracket into the mount itself, that's at 47 foot-pounds. And the driver's side mount, which is the easiest, the nut and the bolt right there are both at 40 foot-pounds along with the bolt that goes through the body into the mount itself, that's 40 foot pounds as well. Now this front mount right here, which is not in position because I've got the RMAC version, I'm waiting on the manual version. This is torqued to 47 foot pounds for this top bolt right here. It doesn't give a torque spec for the bottom. All right guys, you can see here, we finally got the H22 and five speed dropped in position. It took a little longer than anticipated, but some of the hiccups we had to do is remove the AC compressor that was in the way and also the bolts holding on the transmission were getting in the way as well we had to loosen those up so the rear mount was a little tricky itself i'm glad it opened up the rear t-bracket but as you can see here 
I'm on the last motor mount to tighten up and torque things down. I've got all the torque specs printed out from the helms manual, and this basically tells me for the transmission, the rear mount, and the driver's side mount of what torque specs to use. So I'm basically going on factory torque specs. So I want to give a big thanks to my friend and neighbor, Joel here, for helping me drop this in position. I've never been able to do this without his help. And uh, yeah, it was just a good experience and definitely something that you guys should, uh, if uh, you ever have the opportunity, you should definitely uh, learn how to put an engine in a car because it's, uh, it's a very revealing and uh, humbling experience to say the least. All right, well, uh, Joel's got to get going. So I definitely appreciate his help. So I'm gonna go ahead and button things up this weekend, making all the connections and who knows, maybe I'll be able to turn that key and see if it starts up. So fingers crossed. All right, guys, well, if you guys like this video, Please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.